Welcome to our video tutorial on how to find the conjugate of an expression and its use. Ayan, una sa lahat, gusto ko munang matatak sa isip ninyo na ang conjugate ay ginagamit lamang sa mga expressions na may dalawang terms o tinatawag nating binomial. Alam naman natin ang binomials are separated by either addition or subtraction. Now, we have five binomials here and we are interested to give their conjugate. Paano ba binibigay yung conjugate ng mga binomials na yan? Napakadali lang yan. The conjugate is where we negate the operation between two terms. So parang self-explanatory na siya. Ininegate mo lang yung operation between two terms. Kung addition siya, gawin mo subtraction. Kung subtraction siya, gawin mong addition and you are done. Yun na ang conjugate. So dito, para mas maintindihan natin, yung x plus 5, the square root of 7 plus the square root of 3 and so on, kay highlight natin yung mga operation between them. Ayan, yung conjugate ng x plus 5, inegate mo lang yun, magiging subtraction yan. Ayan. And yung bagong expression ay x minus 5. At ang expression na yun ay tinatawag na conjugate conjugate ng x plus 5. Pwede nang baliktad, ang x plus 5 ay conjugate ng x minus 5. Now, yung item 2, palagi nyo, ano kaya ang conjugate niyan? The square root of 7 plus the square root of 3. Answer? Okay, correct. The square root of 7 minus the square root of 3. Ganun lang kadali. Eh, yung the square root of 10 minus the square root of 6. Yung operation dito ay subtraction na. Same process. Kunin mo lang yung kabalik ta ng, ng operation na subtraction. And that is addition. Yan na. Yan na ang conjugate ng given the square root of 10 minus the square root of 6. E yung item 4, meron na tayong numerical coefficient na 2. Doesn't matter. Basta ang concern lang natin, yung operation, babalik ta rin lang natin. At yung bagong expression na yun, ang conjugate ng given binomial. And that's it. You're done. E yung item 5, negative yung first term. Ganun pa rin. Same process. O, inigate mo lang yung operation. Yun na ang conjugate. Now, ano ang pwede natin magawa ngayong alam natin, alam na natin yung conjugate ng given binomial? Ayan, pwede natin ma-recall yung lesson natin sa grade 8 mathematics na sabi niya, kapag mayroon tayong dalawang binomials na magkamukhang magkamukha yung first term at last term, pero magkaiba yung operation, Pwede natin silang ipag-multiply kasi yan ay tinatawag na sum and difference. Kapag pinag-multiply mo yan, hindi ka nagagamit ng FOIL method kasi nga special product sila. At yung product nila ay napakadali lang kunin. Uh, square mo lang yung first term, i-multiply mo lang siya sa sarili niya, and ang operation ay laging subtraction. Tapos square mo naman yung last term. Di ba? Yan ay tinatawag na difference of two squares. Kaya try natin kunin yung product ng mga binomial na ito, and their conjugate. Ayan, kunin natin yung product nila. We are guided by this special product pattern. No? So, kunin natin yung first term. Ang first term ay x. Square mo yan. x squared yun. Tapos, square mo yung last term, o yung second term na 5, magiging 25 yun. Kaya, ang magiging product nila ay x squared minus 25. Hindi mo na kailangan bang gumawa or gumamit ng FOIL method. Item 2, ang first term ay the square root of 7. Kapag ito ni square mo, magiging pareho na yung exponent niya at yung index. Sa law of radical, ang sabi natin, kapag pareho yung index at yung exponent, pwede makancel yon. Kaya ang lalabas dito ay 7 lang. So second term, ganun din, 3 lang matitira dyan. Kaya kapag pinagsama mo to, pag pinagmultiply mo tong dalawang to, magiging 7 minus 3. And of course, 7 minus 3 can be simplified to 4. And you're done. Item 3, ganun pa rin. Square mo yung first term, magiging 10 lang to. Square mo yung second term, magiging 6 lang yan. Kaya meron kang 10 minus 6. And 10 minus 6 is 4. Next, item 4, square mo yung first term, magiging 3 lang yan. Square mo yung second term na may numerical coefficient. Unahin mo yung numerical coefficient. Magiging 2 times itself to, di ba? Square mo rin siya eh. Magiging 4 yan. Itong radical na to, 
kapag yung square mo yung magiging 5 na lang, eh anong gagay mo dun sa 4 dito? Imumultiply mo. So, 4 times 5 to kapag yung square mo. Pag sinimplify yan, pag pinagmultiply itong dalawa, magiging 3 minus 4 times 5. Okay? And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Kaya yan ay 3 minus 20, which is equal to negative 17. Item 5, ganun pa rin. Square mo yung first term. Negative 6, multiply mo siya sa sarili niya. Yun ay negative 6 times negative 6, 36. Minus square ng second term. Magiging 5 lang to, di ba? Kaya yan ay 36 minus 5. And that's it. Final answer is 31. Now, pansinin natin na yung items 2, 3, 4, 5 may mga radicals. Pero, after natin silang minultiply sa kanilang conjugate, yung binigay ng product ay wala ng radical. So, may isip natin na kapag meron tayong denominator in the future na merong binomial na radical, we can multiply them by their conjugate para mawala yung radical. That is rationalizing the denominator, di ba? Ngayon, para mas maintindihan natin to, let's have examples. This is rationalizing a binomial denominator with radicals. Let's say we have 2 over 3 plus the square root of 6. Di ba? Yung denominator dito ay binomial, tapos merong radical. To get rid of that radical, pwede natin magamit yung concept ng conjugate. Kaya in short, ang gagamitin natin method in simplifying expressions na ganito na ang binomial denominator ay may radical ay conjugate method. So, paano ba yan? Kunin mo muna or kopihin mo muna yung given expression tapos i-multiply mo siya, i-multiply mo yan sa factor na conjugate ng denominator. Ano ba ang conjugate ng denominator natin? Correct. 3 minus the square root of 6. Pero kailangan i-multiply mo to yung factor mo dito ay equal to 1. In other words, para maging equal to 1 yan, kailangan maging 3 minus the square root of 6 over 3 minus the square root of 6. Bakit kailangan na maging equal to 1 to? Para hindi magbago yung value ng ating given. Okay? So ngayon, multiply natin to. Yung numerator, simplify natin yung numerator, tapos denominator. Numerator, gagamit tayo ng distributive property. Didistribute natin yung 2. 2 times 3 is... Of course, 6. And then 2 multiplied by negative the square root of 6. That is 2. That is negative 2 the square root of 6. Yung denominator naman, we are multiplying a binomial by its conjugate. Alam na natin yan, magiging square the first term. Yan ay 9. Minus palagi yan, square ng second term. Makakancel yung exponent, saka yung radical, may iwan ay 6. Kaya ang denominator natin ay magiging 9 minus 6. Tapos, simplify pa natin yan. Yung numerator, yung 6 minus 2 the square root of 6, hindi na pwedeng pagsamahin yan, di ba? Kasi nga, hindi sila similar or, or like radicals. Kaya, kukopihin mo lang yan. Yung 9 minus 6, pwede pa. Ayan. Tandaan natin na hindi pwedeng i-cancel yung 6 sa 3 dito, ha? Kasi, ito ay binomial. So, denominator monomial lang, one term. Kaya, final answer na yan. Maliban na lang kung silang tatlo, yung 6, negative 2, at 3, may common factor bukod sa 1. Okay? Next item. 4 over 8 minus 3, the square root of 2. Una, kopihin natin yung given, tapos i-multiply siya sa conjugate ng denominator. Ang conjugate nito ay 8 plus 3, the square root of 2, ba? Kaya, multiply natin yung expression sa 8 plus 3, the square root of 2, over 8 plus 3, the square root of 2. Okay? Tapos, same process. Multiply natin. 4 times 8 is 32. Tapos, 4 times 3, the square root of 2 is 12. The square root of 2. Yung denominator, multiplying a binomial by its conjugate, magiging square mo lang to, 64 yen. Tapos, square mo yung uh, second term, magiging 9 times, 4, 9 times 2 ito, ba? Kaya yan ay 64 minus... 9 times 2. Kasi uh, yung 3, square mo muna, 9 yan, square mo yung square root of 2, 2. Tapos multiply mo yon 9 times 2. Next, simplify natin yung denominator. Kasi yung numerator, din na pwede masimplify yan, di ba? Kamukha nung sa item 1. 
denominator magiging 46 na lang kasi 64 minus 18, 18 ito. Next, is this our final answer? Hindi pa. Kamu hindi ka mukha nung item 1. Itong item 2, yung 32, yung 12, saka 46, may common factor, ba? And that is 2. Mas may mas mataas pa sa 2? Wala na. Ang GCF nila ay 2 na, ba? So, since may GCF sila, na, na greater than 1, makakancel sila. Yung 32, divide mo ng GCF na 2, magiging 60 na lang yan. Yung 12, magiging 6. Yung 46, magiging 23. Tapos, i-write mo lang yan. Kopihan mo lang ulit. 16 plus 6 the square root of 2, all over 23. At yan na ang ating final answer. Last item, we have 3 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 5. Same process. Kopihan mo yung given. Tapos, kunin mo yung uh, conjugate ng denominator. Yan ay the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. Kaya, mumultiply mo ito sa so square root of 2 minus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. Same process. Multiply natin yan. 3 times the square root of 2 is 3. The square root of 2. Tapos, pangalawa, 3 multiplied by negative the square root of 5 is negative 3 the square root of 5. Tapos yung denominator, this is binomial multiplied by conjugate. Square mo yung first term, makakancel yung radical sa yung exponent, magiging 2 lang yan. Minus yung square root of 5, pag square mo yan, 5 lang. So yan ay magiging 2 minus 5. Next, simplify natin. Numerator, uh, parehong radicals pero hindi pwedeng pagsamahin kasi nga hindi sila similar. Denominator, magiging negative 3 na lang yan. Okay? Pwede natin gawin dito. Pwede mong paghihiwala yan. Yung 3, the square root of 2, i-divide mo ng negative 3. Tapos yung pangalawang term, negative 3, the square root of 5, pwede mo na siya i-divide by negative 3. Paghihiwalayin mo. So, gawin natin yun. 3, the square root of 2, divided by negative 3, is negative the square root of 2. Yung pangalawang term, negative 3, the square root of 5, divide mo ng negative 3, that is positive the square root of 5. Diba? And that's it. Yun ang ating final answer. Para mas palinaw, yung 3, negative 3, saka negative 3, may common factor na 3, ba? So, yung 3, divide mo ng 3, magiging 1 na lang yan. Kaya may iwan dyan, the square root of 2 na lang. Yung pangalawang term na negative 3, the square root of 5, divide mo ng 3, magiging negative the square root of 5. Yung denominator na negative 3, divide mo ng uh, 3, magiging negative 1. Kaso hindi pa yung final answer. Kailangan mong uh, matanggal yung negative na denominator na 1. So para mangyari yung negative, yung the square root of 2, divide mo ng negative 1, that is negative the square root of 2. Yung negative the square root of 5, divide mo na ng negative 1, magiging positive the square root of 5. Okay? Pinakita ko lang yung paano na simplify ito in detail. Okay? So that's all. Thank you.